Okay, so I'm going to go over um, peak sun hours uh, in a little more detail because um, this this can be a little bit confusing. Okay, so this is a chart that was in um, a previous presentation, and uh, it shows a uh, sort of generic peak sun profile. Um, so I'm going to talk through this a little bit. Okay, so this chart um, on the um, x-axis we have hours, so hours of the day, you know, sunrise and sunset. I mean this obviously could change throughout the year, but this is hour of the day, and this is the irradiance level, so this is the um, power, basically the solar power, so watts per meter squared, that's hitting the surface at any given time, and as uh, should be no surprise, it's going to, you know, rise above zero at sunrise, and then peak at the local noon, or solar noon, and then by sunset, it's back below the horizon, and there's no irradiance, okay, so this profile should make sense to you, hopefully. Okay, so with peak sun, uh, what we're trying to determine is how many um, hours in an average day the sun is is um, equivalent to a thousand watts per meter squared. Okay, so it's sort of implied that this is that STC are our standard test conditions. So remember, at standard test conditions, we're looking at a thousand watts per meter squared. If you recall from a previous pres presentation, um, this is how solar panels are um, how they're rated, you know, how we determine how many, how many watts you're supposed to get out of a solar panel is under these um, conditions. Okay, so 1,000 watts per meter squared is what we're looking at. So on this chart, imagine that 1,000 watts per meter squared is right here. Okay, so if we didn't have this, you know, this box <clears throat> and all we had was the curve, um, remember this is the, the, uh, an aggregate curve um, of every day throughout the year in an average, quote-unquote average, uh, meteorological year, um, so average weather conditions throughout the year. Okay, so we're looking at a thousand watts per meter squared and how many hours equivalent this, if we could sort of make all of this into um, uh, just a thousand watts per meter squared instead of slowly increasing and decreasing is what we're looking for. So in order to do that, what you can sort of imagine you know, after you determine this curve, you sort of imagine you sort of squish these sides in, for lack of a better term. You sort of squish this in so this side turns vertical, and then, you know, move this in so that's vertical, okay? Um, and at the top, so you have two vertical sides, and at the top uh, should be at 1,000 watts per meter squared, okay? So you can sort of imagine all of this area under the curve fits into this box. And so because the x axis is hour of the day, so however wide this box is indicates how many hours you are at a thousand watts per meter squared, so that's your peak sun. Now, you know, it's fairly difficult to do this um, mathematically, but, um, and I'm not going to ask you to do that, but this sort of explains um, how you can do that. All right, so this is how many hours per day, so in this case it's saying it's about 5.5 hours that it's at 1,000 watts per meter squared. Now remember, this is just equivalent, and it is the average, the average day all year long. So this takes average conditions throughout the year, um, and it describes those. So here's a demonstration that <clears throat> I saw when I was at a, a little workshop over the summer. And so um, if you can imagine, so these are glass jars, okay? and there's some uh, water with a little bit of you know, food coloring in it. And so if you can imagine that each of these jars is an hour of the day, and how deep the water is indicates your um, irradiance, your sort of average irradiance over that hour. Okay, so you can see at the very beginning of the day there's a tiny bit, and then each hour it slowly increases until we have noon, and then it slowly decreases. And by the way, it can jump up and down, but um, I think you just didn't pour it like he wanted to. Uh, anyway, so it slowly decreases to the end of the day, and then you have nothing, okay? So remember, this height is um, irradi uh, irradiance. And you can think of the top of the jar as 1,000 watts per meter squared. And so this is about 500 meters squared for that hour, you know, maybe 400 watts per meter squared for that hour, 200, and so forth, okay? So hopefully you can visualize that. So what he did when, when he was demonstrating this is he actually took all of the other water and dumped it until he filled in these other jars up to the top. So in this case, he could fill five jars, one, two, three, four, five jars all the way up, and then the, the sixth one he could fill about halfway. So that is, you know, sort of equivalent to saying, you know, if you would take all of this sunlight, so all of this irradiance throughout the day, and put it, you know, so fill up 
you know, uh, a jar to 1,000 watts per meter squared, 1,000 watts. So there's one hour, two hour, three hour, four hour, five hours at 1,000 watts per meter squared. And this is sort of the equivalent to another half hour. So in this case, this would be like uh, um, an area that has five and a half peak sun hours in a day. Okay, so hopefully that helps you visualize it a little more. Um, now, the other thing I wanted to go over is that, <clears throat> you know, you you don't normally see irradiance maps. Normally, you'll see irradiation maps. As it turns out, uh, you can actually pretty easily tell um, irradiance, or excuse me, peak sun, um, an average irradiance from an irradiation map. OK, so <clears throat> I'll go through this. It's a re actually a really easy calculation, but let's just do a little sample uh, problem here. So if I want to know how many peak sun hours are in central New Mexico, and all I have is this map, which is just indicating my kilowatt hours per meter squared per day, how can I how can I determine that? Okay, so we'll do central New Mexico. If you're not up on your geography, there you are. Um, so I'm going to say that's about 6.5 kilowatt hours per meter squared per day if I would zoom in on this um, on this legend down here. Okay, so how do I get peak sun from that? Well, first of all, if you recall, in this case, it's peak sun, I'm referring to STC peak sun, right? So it's 1,000 watts per meter squared. So really, I'm trying to figure out how many hours per day I'm getting uh, 1,000 watts per meter squared. Okay, so there's actually a really easy, um, it's a unit, actually kind of a unit conversion, um, or factor, factor labeling. So feel free to press pause and try to figure it out. Okay, so 1,000 watts per meter squared is the same thing as saying one meter squared for 1,000 watts. It's, you know, kind of weird, doesn't make a lot of sense to say it that way, but mathematically it's the same thing. Okay, so it's the same, same thing. And since 1,000 watts is equal to one kilowatt, so 1,000 watts per meter squared is equivalent to one meter squared per kilowatt. So now maybe this is helping you out a little bit. So all you have to do is you take your 6.5 kilowatt hours per meter squared per day, <clears throat> and this is my peak. These are my peak sun conditions, one meter squared per kilowatt. And of course, you can cancel out your kilowatts. So kilowatts cancels out with kilowatts, meter squared per meter squared, and you're left with um, hours per day. So as it turns out, it's really easy to figure this out. 6.5 kilowatt hours per meter squared per day is equivalent to 6.5 hours per day of peak sun. So in other words, 6.5 hours a day at 1,000 watts per meter squared. So kilowatt hours per meter squared is, with a little bit of um, you know, manipulation of units, is equivalent to peak sun hours. So this is really nice if you ever need to figure out peak sun hours and you have a map like this. There are a lot of maps like this out there, um, especially in the US. Um, you can actually figure out your peak sun. Okay.